Well, this is my shop proper. Uh, I define that as this is the space that I keep heated in the wintertime. So it's about 15 feet by 32 feet or so long. And this is where I spend my days. And I have a variety of workbenches and workstations based on what I'm doing. Right here is my first Roubaix bench uh, where I learned uh, through mistake making all the things that I didn't want to do on subsequent Rubo benches. Uh, it's still a fine, a fine tool. Uh, I still use it every day. I've added this sort of higher workstation and will probably build what they call the bench on a bench to put up here since the lighting is so good and it's so comfortable for me to stand and work here on fairly detailed material. Um, uh, that's what I, that's what I do here. A lot of a lot of laying out and setting dimensions and whatnot. One of the things I'll just mention quickly, since uh, since I don't like sore feet or sore legs, I'm always standing on on pads, and I usually just put uh, I have I have scattered around the place what are called horse mats that I just buy at the local feed and seed hardware store here. It's much cheaper than some of the pads that you buy in the woodworking stores. And I find I like them a lot better because they're much more robust. But they're so heavy, you better get a couple of friends to help you move them if you do it. So um, I just don't mind standing on something that I can actually feel fairly comfortable at the end of the day as opposed to wanting to, you know, sort of roll down the hill when the day is done. Um, I am not at all a fan of tool chests. Uh, I know that there is uh, a well-developed school of thought for tool chests, and some people are very, very comfortable with using them. I am not one of those people. I prefer tool boxes or tool racks. So you can see my tools are hanging all about me pretty much all of the time. Um, if, I have, if I had to go digging in a box, I would probably uh, soon give up uh, the trade because I don't, I don't like working that hard, or maybe I'm just not that organized. That is a possibility that I'm not organized enough to use a tool uh, chest. So this is, this is where, I, where I have my tools, you know, one set of tools here. I have lots of um, machinist toolboxes. Uh, I like them a lot and buy them frequently, and you'll see them completely around the room a lot. Uh, I segregate the tool functions or the activities according to what's going on in a particular space. This is my workbench that I've been using for the last 30 some years. I built it myself. Yes, it is very small and yes, it is peculiar, but I had a particular space that it had to fit in in the house where we lived. So it's really only four feet long and about two and a half feet wide. Uh, has an emmert vise in the corner, which I think is uh, this this vice is is sort of the uh, metaphysical center of the of the shop. This is the tool that I use all day, every day when I'm working. I have built a uh, wheel vice here uh, on the one side, so that I can have a sliding wheel vice that um, I think it's clogged up with with shavings now. But uh, I do use this uh, when I'm sh when I'm planing panels. I see something else is wedged down in there. I didn't clean up for you guys to come today, so that's just because I'm a rude guy and I didn't care. So that's uh, I got something jammed down in there, but this is a wheel vise where this this carriage goes back and forth, and I've got some retractable dogs here. I can put them in the vise. I do use that. On the rear side of this bench, I have a full-length 48-inch twin screw face vise, which I built from for materials that were um, just available from, I think, the surplus department of woodcraft or something. So uh, this is a this is a vice that is a great great um, help to me because it's as I said it's the full length, and I can put you know can hold great big things in here. I have 36 inches, 34 inches between between centers. So. Um, this gets this gets used a lot actually um, when I'm when I'm doing that and they're variable. They d I do have um, 
sort of garters on them, but you know that works for me. The one downside to this is it's so small, it doesn't have the mass I would like, so I use the underside of the workbench as a wood storage cabinet. So those few extra hundred extra pounds down there uh, are very, very helpful to the way I work. In the, in the corner over here, I have a workstation. This is where I tend to do my, my fine work engraving or caring for um, objects that I'm conserving for clients, tortoiseshell objects or ivory objects or things. I do a lot of that for clients. And so all of those sorts of tools are here. And I'm actually just reorganizing this space right now. So I'll have, you know, cabinets with carving tools or gun check, gun stock checkering tools. I do a lot of gun stock work here. Um, or, or other, uh, these are my engravers that I have here. Um, some pattern making tools. I have some rotating, uh, let's see if I can get one of these out to show you. These are, this is a, this is a vice that I dreamed up years ago and made it and it's really great because it's a 360 sort of super pan of ice uh, that I can mount work pieces up here. And this is a, a duck pin bowling ball, uh, which I got for 50 cents at the thrift store. And the retainers on which this sits and this sits, these are, these are toilet flanges from the hardware store. So I just have this, uh, so this rotates and spins and does all that. And then I can just tighten it up with a clamp across here and it'll lock it in place. So this is a really useful tool for a lot of the, a lot of the work that I do, uh, which is, is very delicate, um, uh, silver or tortoiseshell, as I said, ivory, working on dec little decorative objects from tea boxes to snuff boxes to things like that. Um, a lot of that sort of stuff, but Unfortunately, you got here a few days too soon for me to have this completely reorganized. And then I have these um, cabinets filled with the specialty tools that I use at this space. This is not a heavy duty workbench, uh, but it does serve my purpose. And I have a, you know, like this is a drawer here for my specialty um, polishing tools. I apparently have a mouse somewhere in here. I'll have to attend to him and turn him into compost um, and I, I think I just I don't have these things yet I may have gun parts in the bottom I don't know but anyway this is a this is a bench that I actually got out of the trash many years ago somebody had thrown it away and um, if I'd have had to use it in the condition it was when they threw it out I'd have probably thrown it in the trash too but I've rebuilt it uh, I've, I've really strengthened its structure so that it doesn't rack. I put it on some slippers to raise it up about four or five inches, and then I bolted the whole thing to the floor. So that makes this a perfectly usable um, workbench for me. And it's great for that, that sort of thing. I can mount my, my uh, jeweler's saw. This is my jeweler's saw that I, my bench. I can mount in here for doing sawing there. Uh, I have my microscope right here for when I'm doing engraving work. I can just swing that around and and uh, work right on there. I've got I've got some things. One of the things that I'm really interested in is um, is the fact that I I, I love to do um, uh, target practicing and I have a really bad dominant eye, so I'm inventing a new. Um, uh, rifle scope so I can use my secondary eye as my primary eye when I'm shooting, which is a pretty cool thing. I think it'll it'll have some purchase out in the out in the larger world. Um, you can also see while well, I got you here these are these are two of the books that I've written um, on, on uh, Rubeau's French cabinet making treaties of the 1760s and 1770s that I published through Lost Art Press, who is the publisher of my books, including uh, the book on Henry Studley's uh, tool cabinet that came out a couple of years ago. So uh, the, I'm really proud of these projects and I'm enjoying very much my collaboration with, with Michelle Pagan and Philippe Lafargue on those. And we'll, we'll continue doing it. So 
when you have those burning questions about the way it was done in the Parisian ateliers in the 1750s. They got the answer for you right there. Um, other, other workstations I have in here. This uh, is a planing beam that I actually use a fair bit. I have some other stuff stacked on it right now. But this is just a southern yellow pine 10 by 10 sitting on a couple of legs that are fastened. It's not exactly a trestle, but they're, they're fastened to the wall. Uh, and I keep this trued up with uh, hold fast holes and I can uh, do planing on it when I need to. Um, I'm in between projects right now where this comes into play, but it's a really nice uh, workbench type station, a great workspace for me. This is so massive, there's no deflection whatsoever. And um, it's, it's cut from the heart of the tree. So there's actually surprisingly little warpage to it. I've only had to true it up couple of times and either one was really severe uh, about that. Uh, the next workstation I have over here is is a workbench that I made in, in uh, homage to Henry Studley. I made this top basically exactly as Studley made his top um, for uh, the, the companion workbench to the Studley tool cabinet. And I made it for the exhibit that, that I did in Cedar Rapids uh, uh, two years ago, in May of 2015. And I'm actually finding it to be a very, very nice addition to my shop. Uh, it's a nice big flat surface that I can do a lot of good work. And over in this corner, uh, I've got a nice piano maker's vise that was a, that was a gift to me by a, a wonderful fellow who's in the, in the woodworking world. And one of the differences between regular woodworking vices and piano makers vices is the piano makers vices are essentially drawers rather than vices they don't slide on twin ways like this it actually is a drawer that slides in and out um, and it's it's really quite a quite a wonderful wonderful um, tool I'm in the process of making patterns to cast uh, this this particular style of vice and hopefully manufacture and sell them. We'll have to see uh, what comes about from that. One of the projects that's on my bench here is a replica of an 1820s desk uh, that a com client has commissioned me to make. This is an earlier replica that I was working on some years ago. This is one that I've been uh, working on in recent times. And these are actually two of the hand-sawn um, crotch veneers panels that I needed for this and I'm just in the process now of uh, planing them down with toothing planes to where they're working thickness. I'm not good enough at sawing veneers yet to hit a twelfth of an inch right off the bat so I have to actually plane them down uh, and you know I use uh, this is a this is a jig that I made for just doing uh, that sort of work here at the corner let me just move these things out of the way so I can show you what's going on. By the way, this on this desk as it is now, there's just enough finish on it so that I can read the grain. This is not a finished surface. It hasn't even begun to be a finished surface. Um, so I, uh, I just place the pieces of veneer down on this very, very simple jig that I made. It's just a modified bench hook, and I can put my uh, pieces of wood down here and work with them with a small toothing plane. This is the one that's the right size for this particular project. But, uh, you know, I'll get that down thin enough to where I can use it in, in not too much more distant time. A couple of the other planes that I've used on dealing with this really, really squirrely stuff um, is a, uh, a couple of violin makers planes like this uh, that I have or this that are used to dealing with squirrely stuff. I have this one that I got actually at a tool meet someplace for it's clearly cobbled together off of some other stuff. Um, but then I also like working with these two 
chariot planes that I got for not very much money um, at, at Martin Donnelly's auctions a few years ago. Uh, these are just, I'm sure they were less than $10 a piece, but once you get them tuned up and ready to go, this one in particular is my favorite tool. Um, I just keep it in my apron pocket almost all the time and, you know, do pretty much everything with it. I don't trim my hair or mustache with it, but other than that, I, I use it for all kinds of fitting. Um, I tend to work on a fairly small scale, so great big tools aren't really amenable to what I do except for the times when I need them. I mean, when you're planing a top like that, yeah, I get out my big number eight or other big joiner planes, but that's only for a minute or two at a time. And then I move on to um, uh, smoothers or things like that. I also, on some of this squirrely stuff, I use toothing planes a lot. I have, I have a good, good collection of toothing planes, um, vintage ones mostly, and uh, I use them. They're all a little bit different. Um, so... That's, uh, that's sort of what goes on here. I, I tend to um, dedicate one bench to one project. I'm not the kind of guy that likes to move projects on and off the bench. So this bench has been dedicated to this desk now for several months. Um, I have another bench back in the corner there that's just underneath my finishing supplies. That was my bench at the Smithsonian for many, many years that I built. And... Uh, Currently, it's where I do virtually all of my finishing, and my boombox lives there. I listen to music pretty much all day long when I'm when I'm working, uh, either that or listen to lectures or books on tape um, when I'm when I'm working. So, this is this is my workspace. Uh, again, um, I am as you can see, I'm completely surrounded by windows. When I bought the barn, there were no windows in it. So my buddy Craig and I built all of these windows in place. They're fixed glass. There are no moving glass windows in here. That's not useful for me. I do have vents that I can open in the summertime, but we're a high enough altitude that there's really only a, a week or 10 days where I even need to turn a fan on out here in the summertime. It's much more important to, to keep it warm. So um, with all of its warts and and a dishevelment. This is this is where I work. This is where I earn my living uh, these days, and it suits me just fine. And um, my biggest my biggest um, hurdle being out here is that certain times I'll just catch myself looking out the window at the mountains across the way, and that's quite a distraction. But you know, if that's the worst downside you've got in your life, that's not bad. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!